All right, Nick. How you doing, pal? Hey. How you doing? How you doing? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm okay, thanks. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, no worries. My right, pleasure. Nick. How you doing, pal? Good. So, we'll just give it a... Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you fine. I was actually trying to log into my um, laptop, but it didn't seem to be working, so I'm on my phone instead. I'm rubbish with technology. Hey. So. How are you doing? How are you doing? Thank you. How are you? I'm okay. okay. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, no worries. Oh, why can I hear myself? Yeah, I think there's a bit of delay. Okay. It should, it should give it a few seconds. It should even out. Okay, perfect. Okay, good. So, tell everybody a bit about where you're from and where it all started for you. Yeah, so I am originally from, well, I was born in Abu Dhabi, but spent yeah. pretty much most of my childhood uh, living in Harpenden, uh, just um, north of London. And yeah, with pretty much all my childhood was there. My dad got me into playing football. Wasn't really much of an opportunity for girls to play when I was younger. So okay. I just used to have a kick about with my dad and some friends from school, just in a local park. And it was really only when I turned around 14, 15 and got trials to go to Watford, where I really then started playing football a bit more seriously. Okay, so how did that come about then, the Watford connection? Was that through school, was it? Yeah, so pretty much I started playing for Harpen and Colts, which is where I'm from. Um, and then kind of, you know, in tournaments and stuff, you got scouted. And I remember getting involved with England at the under 15s level. Um, and then through like the Centre of Excellences, Watford approached me and asked me to be part of their Centre of Excellence. So I got involved yeah. there at around 14, 15. And then okay. in a few years through playing in the Centre of Excellence, then made my first team appearance at Watford. So yeah. when I was about 15, 16 years old. Yeah, okay. You played for a few teams in London, didn't you? Just yes. have a little chat to us about the transitions from Watford to Fulham, Charlton, was it? Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, so yeah. I was at Watford um, most of my childhood and then I took, uh, made the move to Fulham. I was only there for a couple of years. Didn't really get a lot of playing time under Marianne Spacey. Um, and then Keith Bonas, who was head coach at Charlton at the time, approached me and asked me if I'd want to sign for Charlton, which was a yeah. big move for me because at the time, except for Arsenal, they were the real force in women's football. So I made the move to Charlton and had a great year at Charlton. Loved my time there. Um, had an appearance in the FA Cup final when I was 18 years old. We lost to Arsenal, but it was still incredible to, to play in an yeah. FA Cup final. Had a good year playing up front with Eniola Aluko, uh, scored yeah. lots of goals. And then, unfortunately, the women's team folded. So that's then when I made the move to Everton. OK. So in your early days, you were playing quite a high level for a young player then? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, at the time, you know, you play with a lot of people that you look, look up to. Um, yeah. And you don't really think about it at the time. When I signed for Charlton, I was only 18 years old and playing up front with Eniola Aluko, who was a regular England yeah. international at the time. Casey Stoney was our captain there. Um, yeah. So it was, as a kid, you know, I really felt like I developed that year at Charlton playing with those type of players. Yeah. Was you, were you full-time then? or? No, no, not at all. So pretty much I was still kind of coaching, going to, to college and, a lot yeah, of the yeah. players we trained at night time two or three times a week. So, no, it wasn't full-time. I only really turned full-time when I went to Liverpool when I was around uh, 24. Was that the first time you played in the WSL? Uh, I was actually... Um, my first WSL was Everton. Um, but okay. we were only training two or three nights a week at Everton. And then when I made the move to Liverpool, that's when we kind of started training every day full-time. OK, so moving on to that then, about the training... <laughs> A lot of young players are intrigued to know what a, a daily week is for a professional women's player. So yeah. just just base it on in your time at Liverpool, Everton <laughs> Liverpool, where you went more full time. Yeah. You, you sort of your Monday to Friday preparation mm. for the games. What sort of things would you be up getting up, up to in regards of cardio or and then your types of set piece training and on the pitch yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, That's so, one thing I love to know about. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I can tell you um, with regards to the transition. So my first year at Liverpool, when we went full time, um, we were still training at night. Um, we trained five yeah. days a week still, but we still trained at night time. Um, whereas now, obviously playing for AC Milan, it, yeah. it's a full time job. So our, yeah, kind yeah. Of prep our preparation now would be, um, let's say we play on a Sunday, for instance, um, we would have the Monday off completely to rest and recover. And then yeah. we actually train pretty much then all the way through to the game. We train Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, beginning of the week tends to be um, a little bit heavier weight. So on the Tuesday yeah. in the morning, we would uh, lift heavy in the gym. And yeah. then we would tend to do more kind of running condi uh, conditioning session on the Tuesday. Wednesday. So, no. Go on, go ahead. Sorry, yeah, can you, sorry, I lost you there, a bit of lag. Yep. So, yeah, up to Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday then um, we would lift again, but slightly lighter. And then would maybe be a um, little bit more of a technical session, not as much running. And then yeah. towards the end of the week, the kind of uh, Thursday, Fridays, we would focus more on who we're playing against on the Sunday, do a lot yeah. more tactical work, um, a little bit lighter stuff in the gym, uh, not too heavy on the legs, more upper body. And then yeah. Saturday would be more of a light-hearted, a little bit of rondos, handball, um, just set pieces before the game on Sunday. So when my under-14s girls players start coming to train on a Tuesday night now for one hour, they know yeah. they ain't got a mouth. There's no mouth. <laughs> no. Do you know what? It's funny because I think when you turn professional and it's very strict on the amount of time you can train, you're only allowed to be on the pitch for an hour and a half, two hours max. The coaches yeah. are very strict on not wanting to overtrain you so that you're fresh for the weekend. I actually miss being a kid again where you could just train as much as you wanted. I remember yeah. when I was in lockdown um, for three months, um, beginning of last year in England, and I couldn't train, obviously, with my club. And I just loved being able to be in a field and be on the pitch for two or three hours working on things that I want to work on. Um, and yeah. I miss that because now when I ask the coach to stay behind to do a bit of finishing... A lot of the time, it's like, no, you need to offload, you need to rest. And so, yeah, yeah your kids shouldn't be moaning. They should be, um, tell them to enjoy it as much as they can. Because yeah. the older you get, it becomes a lot stricter. Yeah. Coming to actually talking about the finishing, you've scored a lot of goals. and You've scored goals wherever you've played. I've, I've checked, I've done my research. <laughs> and, I've seen some, and, I've, and I've seen some of the goals that you've scored for Milan as well. Some good finishes. Thank Do you... you. As you were younger, did you spend more time doing that, or is that something that you've been you've sort of tweaked as you've got older, finish more finishing sessions and stuff? Mm -hmm. I definitely think when I was younger, I just loved to play. So I just always remember having a ball in my hand, being outside, being in the garden, shooting, you know, in the goal all the time. You know, you know, you were commentating as a kid, crossing it into yourself and finishing. So I think when I was younger, it was more about just playing and having fun. Then the older I got, yeah. the more serious I became. And when I became more professional, I was always wanting to do extra finishing all the time. If I missed a yeah. chance in a game, I would then that week just work on that type of finish. So that next time I got that opportunity, I, did, I scored it again. So I'm, I'm, I'm a big believer in, you know, nothing comes to you unless you work on it. And 100%. You know, if you don't work on that, then how are you meant to then in a game instinctively yeah. finish? Yeah, because it's the hardest... It, although kids play as strikers, it's still so hard to score goals on a regular basis. Yeah, no, it is. And, it is. and, and so it's like, no, and I agree. I think it's hard. I've so, gone through this season in Milan. I've gone like four or five games without a goal, and you know it's hard. You don't you don't doubt yourself, but it definitely knocks your confidence slightly, and then you're overthinking, and then you sometimes try too hard. And, and a lot of the time, yeah. I just go back to the basics. I just get a ball. I like to just get some finishes off in training, see the ball hit the back of the net. And I just try always to think in a game, get in the right areas, you know, get in the penalty area, you know, just be alive to anything and then the chance will come and then just being confident when that chance does come to finish it. Yeah, but you also have to rely on your players around you, don't you? You have to create yeah. the chances for you. I mean, it's not just all your... It's not all yeah. your I see a lot of strikers like... Danny Ings recently going through a bit of a dry spell with Southampton mm. and Firmino. You have to have the chances to create for you. Yeah. And I'm the type of striker as well. You know, you have those strikers like your Luis Suarez, your Messi that can create yeah. things from nothing. I'm the type of striker that 
you know, I do rely on that service. I'm, I'm a goal scorer who, you know, likes crosses into the box, getting on the end of things. And it's funny in, in football as a striker, when you are scoring, everyone, you know, praises you, loves you, you're the hero. Yeah, yeah. And then when you go through a couple of games without scoring, it's, it's almost like then you get questioned. But I think it's just always believing in yourself and, and not doubting yeah, yeah. yourself. Yeah, definitely. So back to your club career before we talk about England. You've played all over, I know where you've played all over the world. Yeah. But just talk to us about your different, the different periods of time where you've played, like Norway, Sweden and yeah. America and, and, and Australia. And just a little bit about the differences in each country, if, if you don't mind having a chat about yeah. that. Yeah, so my first opportunity to go abroad was Australia. It was just a yeah. couple of months on loan to Melbourne Victory. And yeah. I then obviously ended up spending six years um, playing over there, um, was captain of the yeah. club and fell in love with the club and the city. And the league over there is still kind of classed as semi-professional, but year on year it's got stronger. And you look at the players that the W League have produced, the likes of Sam Kerr, you know, there's so many Australians now playing in the UK. Um, the league over there, I would say, is competitive, but maybe a, a slightly slower tempo to the likes of America. The league over yeah. there, they're, they're athletes. It's really yeah, yeah. transitional. It's end-to-end, -end, high intensity, not very possession-based. It's more a transitional game, which maybe doesn't suit my type of play. I prefer more of the English style of football, you know, possession, a bit more tactical, uh, you know, that kind of um, style of football. Norway yeah. and Sweden was slightly in between. Um, I would say not as fast tempo as England and America, but technically and tactically just as good. Um, yeah. And then similar to Italy, I would say that the tempo here is slower, but the tactical side, the technical side of things is strong. And from the top to the bottom of the league, it's very competitive, which I think is great because you look at England, the Chelsea's, uh, probably the City's, United, you know, it's Arsenal, and then you have a big drop um, maybe towards the bottom of the league. So I think it's important that every team is competitive throughout. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit about your England call-up for the senior team. Obviously, you played at youth levels. Yeah. And I was talking to um, Emily Westwood about mm -hmm. last week or so, and she was talking about how she progressed through the, through the youth team as well. But just talk to us about the day you actually got the official court to the England, the senior team and, and, and how it felt. Yeah, so it was, I was similar to Woody. Uh, I played under-17s, under-19s, under-23s. Under and it was yeah. when I played in the under-20s World Cup in Chile. I was 18 years old. And then I got the call up to, um, to the senior team after that tournament from Hope Pal. And obviously it was a dream come true to, to get that senior call up. I was in good form playing for Everton. I remember um, I played in the FA Cup final, scored two goals in that, and we beat Arsenal. So I think at club level, I was performing well, and she felt that I deserved the call-up. Um, and yeah, yeah. For, for me, it was great to be involved, to be playing with the likes of Kelly Smith and so many players that you kind of aspire to look up to as a young kid. Um, yeah. And yeah, would have loved to have played more for England, of course. I, I kind of felt like I never really got the opportunity you, to get yeah, as you, much playing time as I would have liked. But still, yeah. I represent oh, my country. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you're a bit unlucky, really, to miss out. You're a top goal scorer as well, weren't you, at the time? Yeah. And you missed yeah. out on one squad. So. Yeah. But that's that, that's another story. <laughs> but did I was talk, I was listening to um, some Jimmy Bullard podcast mm -hmm. the other week, and he was talking with Bobby Zamora about when he linked up with the England team, the level of training was mm -hmm. just from, from there with your club up to there. Did yeah. you notice that in the women's game as well? Because I was intrigued about that. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I yeah. mean, and it's not just the physical side of things. It's mentally as well. You know, you feel as if you're on trial. You know, at club level, when you know the players a bit more, you know the manager knows you, you're a little bit more relaxed. You feel as if you can be a bit more, you know, like yourself. Whereas when you take that step up for your first senior call, it is nerve-wracking. You know, you, you don't want to mess up. Um, you're on yeah. edge a little bit more. You're not as relaxed and and feel as confident as maybe you do at club level. So, but I was excited for sure. I was looking at the likes of your Kelly Smiths, your Rachel Yankees, the people that have been there and done it, seeing how they trained, yeah. seeing how they ate, seeing how they prepared. And I just really tried to keep my head down and just you know try my best and and 
try to obviously get another call up and, you know, try and perform mm. as well as I could. Do you feel that you improved you as a player? Yes, the, definitely. The England experience, yeah. Yeah, it did. With confidence and everything, going away with a senior team, it does give you that little booster. And then when you take it back to club level, you try and raise, um, I guess, your quality and intensity at club level as well. Um, because And then obviously that has a knock-on effect on, on your teammates at club level. So I definitely think going away um, opened my eyes up to really what it was like to be a professional football player. Yeah. Talk to us about some of the things that you've won because you're such a decorated player. So just a little quick like, run off about what things that you've won, your own personal achievements and what you've yes. won for your teams as well. Yes, I'm really proud to admit that every club I played at, I've always got um, the golden boot. Um, so that's a big achievement yeah. for me. It's something Definitely. that I love. I love to score goals. You know, it's not the be all and end all. I'm here to win first and foremost, but it's obviously nice to to get that golden boot everywhere you play. My first major trophy was with Everton. We won the League Cup um, and yeah. I also won the FA Cup with Everton. I won the double with Liverpool. So won the league back to back with Liverpool, which was a great achievement for myself. I support the club, my home's there. So that was a really cool achievement. And then I won the yeah. league as well in Australia. Um, so, and I've obviously won um, PFA Player of the Year awards, um, and been in team of the years. And, yeah. and yeah, so, you know, I'm really They've happy. You've done it all. With, yeah, well, you know, Champions League is one that I still would love to win. Uh, you know, and that's, that's a tough yeah. one, because you know, Leon have dominated yeah. for so long. Um, but, yeah, so you know, good I'm, here at Milan. I'm here at Milan at the minute. We're, you know, into the semi-finals of the, the Coppa Italia. We're three points behind Juventus, you know, really looking in a good position for Champions League. So hopefully I can add more to the list here in Italy. Good, amazing. Talk to us a little bit then, and mention the Champions League, that experience, because now you played in the Champions League, haven't you? Yeah, so I played um, in the Champions League for Everton, Liverpool, Linköping in Sweden. Um, always made it to the quarterfinals, but never really made that semi final. It's, it's always tough, you know, when you came across back in the day, your Wolfsburgs, your Leons, um, you know, your big clubs. Whenever you drew them, it was always a struggle because they dominated women's football at that time. And probably at the time that I was at Liverpool and Everton, we weren't as strong as the German teams and as the French teams. Um, but to play against the likes of, I remember playing Frankfurt and playing against Birgit Prince, who back in the day was one of my idols playing for Germany, one of the best strikers in the women's game. Um, so you get to play against some of the best in the world, um, and it's, a, and it's a tournament that I'd love to get involved in again. And hopefully I can represent uh, Milan in the Champions League next year. Yeah. Talking about um, being at Milan, I've just seen an interesting uh, question pop up there. Is the communication an issue during, it, during the games in Italy? So, obviously, you've, you've would have had to learn to language. Yeah. I would have thought, yeah. So, just a little bit about that. That's an interesting question there. It's definitely been the hardest, um, hardest transition of my football career. Um, I didn't realise just how hard it was going to be when I signed for Milan because I've played in Norway and Sweden where English isn't their first language. However, they can speak English. Where here in Milan, yeah. the Italians speak very little English. All the players, the coaching staff, minimal English. So it has been a struggle. And I'm the type of player that I love to communicate. I love to have a real good connection with my teammates and my managers. So it's frustrating yeah. at times that I can't communicate how I would like to. I'm trying to learn Italian, but I'm going to be openly honest and say, you know, it, it's hard. Um, you know, I'm 32 years old and just to try and learn a new language within six months is, is pretty impossible um, at times. But I've just yeah. tried to pick up on words. Um, we obviously have um, one of the players translate for us when we're in meetings and during training. If we don't understand, she'll translate. Um, and football's football. On the pitch, if you know the game plan, you know, football's an yeah. easy game. You know, it's, it's a worldwide sport that you don't need yeah. to really speak the same language. However, it is hard. I'm not going to lie. Um, mm. At times, just with you know, the understanding side of things and, and getting your personality across when you don't speak the same language. Yeah, interesting. Do you see your future coming going forward at Milan? 
It's, I mean, it's a great question. Look, I'm, I'm, a big, I'm a big believer in if I'm happy, then, you know, and yeah. we're winning, then I'll stay. Um, you know, I'm not just going to stay somewhere um, if I don't feel like I'm improving as a player. At the minute, the yeah. team's winning, you know, and that's, as, yeah. a, as a player, that's what you want. You want to be winning games. I want to be scoring goals. But I also yeah. need to have um, that real fulfillment in me. And, and right now, I'm happy at Milan, for sure. Um, do I see my future here with COVID and with everything? You know, it's a challenging time for everyone. Yeah, um, it's difficult but, for you too. Yeah, it is. And I miss my family. Um, you know, I miss home. Yeah. And it's always harder when you are in lockdown. However, do I want to play Champions League again? Do I want to win trophies? Yes. And does Milan offer me that? Yeah, it definitely does. So, um, yeah, yeah, for now, definitely see my so future. So, things kind of... Exactly, yeah. 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 So what what's after football? Obviously, we've had, we've had a chat privately, but obviously yeah. you're, you're doing your coaching and stuff. What where do you see yourself in, in in that level? Do you see yourself as a manager, as a coach? Yeah. So when I was younger, or a few years ago, I always I was doing my A license, and I'm still undergoing yeah. my coaching A license badge now. And I would yeah. love to have stepped into the managerial side of things, but. It's a very stressful job and it's 24-7. Yeah. It basically takes over your whole life. So I may be seeing myself getting yeah, more yeah. involved in the academy side, maybe being an under-16s, under-18s academy coach, a um, little bit yeah. less Very pressure, short. less stressful. Um, and yeah. so, yeah, that's definitely a passion of mine. And then I really enjoy the media side of things. Yeah. I, I've done a bit of work for Fox Sports in Australia. Um, okay, I love yeah. doing the co-commentary um, and for me, it's the perfect job. You get to watch football, you get to talk about yeah. it. So that would be something I'm really passionate about getting involved in. Yeah, there's a lot more players now, isn't there, doing, all, doing that all over? Yeah. yeah. No, it's great to see. Let's have a look at some of the questions. What's your proudest achievement? I would say winning the league back-to-back -back with Liverpool. It was special because yeah. Arsenal had won the league for so long. I think they had won it eight or nine years in a row. So to... Yeah knock them off the top and then to win it back to back that was probably my proudest achievement are you a Liverpool fan? I am I kind of have yeah. to be <laughs> <laughs> hopefully yeah. we don't get rid of Klopp because if they did oh. that it's just scandalous if they did no, that's never happening <laughs> no. Who, who's your favourite player you've played with and your toughest opponent? Oof, that's a really good that, question that's, that's a hard one uh, it was a same yes. League. It's a tough one to answer. It is. Look, I'm going to have to say my partner, Becky Easton's my favourite player that I've played with. You know, she was just okay, a tough yeah. midfield player, strong, yeah. good good tackler. And then the yeah. hardest opponent I've played against would be Wendy Renard. Played against her in the Cyprus Cup final and she just had everything. She was quick, strong, good on the ball, good in the air. She was just like a brick wall trying to get past. Good brownie points there, Natasha. I like yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's have a look would you ever play in England again yes Obviously, definitely yeah. Yeah, yeah no I would I'd love to I'd love to maybe finish my career there come back and, and I haven't played there for the last six years and it'd be nice for my family to watch me play again and I've yeah, changed yeah. a lot as a player as well so it'd be nice to go back and show people how I've improved as a player and a person yeah who's your favourite men's player at the moment oh. I, you know what? I've got a few. I love Bobby Firmino just purely because of his work yeah. rate. He doesn't score enough yeah. goals for me, though. So then at the minute, I'm loving... You ought to give you some tips. Yeah, I know. Being at Milan, I love Zlatan. Just with his goal-scoring record. Yeah, he's a, yeah, and, you know, a legend, 30, isn't he? 38, 39, and he's just a beast. He just scores goals for yeah. fun. So I like those two at the minute. They're good. Let's see if I can see a couple of more questions. <laughs> You're getting a lot of love from the Milan faithful. Oh, good. <laughs> How is it to be trained by a former great striker like Mr. Gans? Yeah, that was a big reason why I came to Milan, to you know play for someone like uh, Mr. We call him at, at, at training. But he's played for Milan, yeah. played for Inter, played for Italy. And, you know, it's very rare in the women's game to have someone of that calibre coaching in women's football. Um, so I'm always pestering him to stay behind and do extra finishing with me. And he's always just telling me to get in the box. He said, don't go out wide, don't go into midfield. That's what, you know, our wide players and our midfield players are paid to do.
get in the box and score goals. And he's constantly yeah. saying that to me. And I think it's important um, to listen to everything that he tells me because he's been there and he's done it. Yeah. Do you think that we'll see any players progressing from in the, in the English women's football, like male players maybe getting into management? I know Phil Neville did mm -hmm. the England side, but do you think we'll see that more? I would love to see it. You know, the way the women's game's going and how big it's becoming, I think it's a real attraction. Uh, and I don't see why, you know, men players wouldn't want to get involved in the women's game. Um, it's something that I've spoke to a lot to my uncle and my dad about. And, you know, you, you have been yeah. seeing it a lot more. And I would love to, I just think yeah. the best people for the job, you know, and whether that's female or male, just, you know, having the right people who are passionate about growing the women's game. Yeah, I was going to ask you like, about, uh, obviously you're from a football family, but you can just talk, touch on that a little bit if you want, because we've got a few questions about why you got into football. Because obviously yes. for my daughter, she's just been, grassroots football, just been, she's been born into that. So yeah. she's just, she started playing. But just talk about your football family and, and who they are, because obviously I'll just tell the yeah. people who might not know. So my uncle is Ian Dowie. So he played yeah. in the Premier League for the likes yeah. of West Ham, Southampton, played for Northern Ireland as well. My dad played yeah. semi-professional. So they were both big into football. Um, and my uncle then went into managing Crystal Palace in the Premier League. And my dad was actually the director of football at Palace when they're in the Premier League together. So I really had no choice but to get into football. My dad didn't have a boy. So I was kind of like the tomboy of the family that they got kicking yeah. a ball around. And really, my dad's been my coach from day one and has been yeah. my support system, driving me to games every week, um, you know, up and down the country when I signed for Everton and having to do the four-hour drive up and back. Um, so, you know, they've been my big support system. And my uncle, Ian, has obviously always taken an interest in my football. He's always asking my dad how I'm doing and, and he's really proud of what yeah. I've achieved in my career so far. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. He's such a decorated player. And um, obviously, I think that'll be such a good thing for kids if you do get into football. Hopefully, you do get into management. One day, you never know, you might be managing in the uh, Women's Premier League over here. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> so, I'm going to let you go, because I know you're looking forward to the Liverpool game. I'll just get oh, a few I know. And, I need to win what, They need what to win think? today. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a tough game. He's a... Uh, He's a German manager, isn't he? The Leipzig manager. So yeah, German. no, yeah. no, it is. It's been a tough patch for the boys, but you know that's what you know when you're winning so many games and performing so well, then you have to go through these periods. And I'm confident they'll um, get back to winning ways. Are you a yeah, Birmingham fan or Aston Villa? No, I'm, a, I'm Aston Villa fan. Aston okay. Villa, yeah. Yeah, no, they're doing yeah, well. We've actually, I've actually, yeah, I've actually got um, one of the players coming on um, next Friday for a oh, similar okay. chat like this. Brilliant. Yeah, so. We're going to talk about some stuff that um quite relevant at the moment to social media and yeah. and depression and bullying and stuff like that. So we're going to have a okay. chat about that as well. Oh, yeah, so it should be good. No, well, thanks for I having appreciate, me I appreciate, yeah, I appreciate again, it. You know. Yeah, well, I was going to say, if we could uh, maybe get back together on the end of the season and see where Milan finished and see how it went and, and talk about the season. Definitely. Brilliant. Definitely. Sounds good. Okay, right. perfect. So, good, good luck for Liverpool. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> Bye.